Stan Jabalisco here. I have uh, an idea for a an ultra low frequency receiver. By ultra low frequency, ULF. I mean 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz. Very low frequency uh, would be 3 kilohertz to 30 kilohertz. Low frequency, 30 kilohertz to 300 kilohertz. But this is ULF, ultra low frequency. Uh, this is roughly, um, in fact, almost exactly the passband of a single sideband uh, transmitter's audio section and crystal filter. So s I just had an idea for a frequency converter that will stretch out this ultra low frequency spectrum and make it appear much wider so that you can look deeper down into the frequency spectrum detail of it. And I'm going to explain how I would do that. I haven't actually tried it yet and that, so the details have to be worked out. But I'm pretty sure it would work if done uh, you know, after a little bit of experimentation, or maybe a lot of experimentation. Maybe you'd like to do some of this experimentation. But I do have the necessary equipment except for the dummy load, <laughs> which I have never seen fit to have. My transmitters tune themselves automatically, so I don't need one. Or the small multi turn loop antenna specifically designed for receiving low, very low, ultra low, super low, supercalifragilistic expialidociously low, etc., etc., frequencies. Well, you're not going to hear much at these frequencies except line noise from the alternating current power lines unless you get out into a remote area. And then you're going to hear activity within the ionosphere and the Earth's magnetosphere, which I have heard is quite fascinating, especially during a geomagnetic storm. And should you ever travel into outer space or to another planet that does not have an ionosphere to block signals from outer space, you may hear signals from other stars. I mean, signals meaning perhaps noise, electromagnetic noise that you've never imagined until you actually hear it. Well, I want to hear it. I'm a little old for space travel, but uh, maybe we can make an arrangement with the gods to shut down the ionosphere for a few minutes. <laughs> Heaven forbid, but seriously. Uh, this ought to be a very interesting device for listening to unknown ultra low frequency energy in remote areas not affected by the noise from power lines but it it's a little more complicated than just listening on the same frequency with a single sideband receiver it suppose that you connect uh, this transmitter up and into the microphone input not the antenna but the microphone input, the audio input, you put your ultra low frequency signal. What they need to do with these uh, Surface Pro devices is, and maybe they've advanced them, but they need to make the pen a little more sensitive with the touch screen, just a, an aside here. But suppose then that you, your ULF signals from exactly the passband of the SSB transmitter go into this microphone input and create an SSB signal comprising whatever this antenna happens to hear and it goes through a dummy load and a resistor to help keep the receiver from being fried from the transmitter output. You, you tune the transmitter as low as it will go, preferably down to spot mode so that it's really not transmitting any significant uh, amount of power just enough so that the receiver can hear it. 
then here you put the antenna input this is the antenna input right here now suppose that you go on upper sideband and you tune this single sideband transmitter to exactly let's just say 3.500 megahertz now that's in the CW band but it doesn't matter because we're not sending anything out over the air so you get uh, 3.503 Three point five zero zero thirty five hundred uh, plus thirty five hundred uh, kilohertz three point five zero zero three zero zero to three point five oh you figure it out three point five megahertz plus this upper side band value so it'd be uh, about three point five 003 to 3.503 megahertz a 2.7 kilohertz wide span and then with the SSP receiver you listen not to 3.5 megahertz but to some harmonic value um, say 7 that would be twice the frequency 14 megahertz would be four times the frequency 28 megahertz would be eight times the frequency. So let's say that you tune this thing to 28.000 megahertz. You put it in the CW mode with a narrow filter. What are you going to get? You're going to get the eighth harmonic of this upper sideband signal right here which is going to be spread out spectrum wise by a factor of 8 so it's not going to go be only uh, 2.7 kilohertz wide but it's going to be 2.7 times 8 whatever the heck that is well let's try this let's see if I can get this right 2.7 times 8 8 times 7 is 56 8 times 2 is 16 21 and then a decimal 21.6 kilohertz or er, uh, 21.6 kilohertz wide it's going to be uh, from 2.4 kilohertz above 28 megahertz to whatever 21.6 kilohertz more than that uh, 3.503 you do the multiplication it's but it's going to be spread out because when you listen to the harmonic of, of an amplitude modulated signal with sidebands the sideband components all get multiplied just the same as the carrier or the suppressed carrier would. So the second harmonic gets spread out by a factor of 2, the third harmonic by a factor of 3, the eighth harmonic by a factor of 8. Or if you have a shortwave receiver, you could listen to uh, uh, 35 megahertz and listen to the tenth harmonic and get a nice, crisp, ni mathematically neat multiple. Um, each 100 Hertz division on the receiver would correspond to uh, well each kilohertz on the receiver would correspond to only 100 Hertz in the actual signal so you'd get a, a spread out version you'd be able to dig down deeper into the spectral details of the signal if you tune your receiver up 10 kilohertz um, you'd only be getting one kilohertz worth of spectrum so that you would have a, a, a very slow rate of tuning am I making myself at all clear I, I guess if you're a ham radio operator right you should probably understand this or an engineer you should probably be, be able to follow it's a difficult concept to explain but quite simple to implement as long as you don't fry your receiver 
and uh, that should be easy enough to manage if you make sure that you don't transmit any significant amount of power into it. Uh, so what are you going to get? You're going to get a spread out version of garbage. Y instead of just having all the garbage in your own yard, you're going to have garbage all over the whole neighborhood if you live in a congested area with a lot of AC noise because that's all you're going to hear in here. But if you live out in the wide open spaces, the wilds, the polar regions, far out in the ocean, out in outer space, far away from civilization and all of its noise, both audible and electromagnetic and psychological and spiritual and etc etc if you get away from all of that and then use one of these receivers you'll actually hear what nature has to say in this frequency range and I have a feeling that it will be a very interesting story that nature has to tell in these frequencies and that if we spread them out and dig down into the into this frequency details of each little component we'll hear things that we've never imagined we would hear on a radio I just love to imagine things that I can't imagine there's something there's some kind of a challenge about that even for an old troglodytic fuddy-duddy such as myself my ham radio call sign by the way is W1 GV whiskey one good vibrations I don't think this would qualify necessarily as a ham radio video but it ought to qualify at least for mysteries and musings so you'll find it in the playlist mysteries and musings my screen just got suddenly brighter I wonder if yours did too I'm learning this uh, the details of how to use this program. I, I just hope someday I'm talented enough so I don't have to interject all of these stupid comments about how incompetent I am with it. But I hope that you uh, made a little bit of sense out of this. We're trying to listen to this frequency range by stretching it way out spectrum wise so that we could look deep down into the anatomy of whatever nature has to say in this ultra low frequency electromagnetic band of radio frequencies. Stan Jibalisco signing off. Until next time, so long. <laughs>